Okay, you've just seen the uh, Slim Jim for four meters up on the um, DX Commander pole. Um, when it was first put up, when I cut it first, I checked it on this analyzer, and the SWR was really good. It was about 1.04 to 1, which I was very pleased with. But with the wet weather that we've had the last few weeks, um, it's been changing. And uh, we'll just check the SWR again in a moment. I'll do a sweep on the meter here. And it's going to sweep over to 25 megahertz bandwidth. And you can see there it's indicating that the resonant or near enough the resonant frequency is now 69.5 uh, megahertz. That's shifted. It's dry just at the moment. Uh, if it was raining, it would probably go down lower. So it's a little bit of an issue. I'm not sure whether there's some water getting into the antenna itself. But I did read that the 450 ohm ribbon, which uh, the Slim Jim's made out of, um, does change capacitance in the wet. And uh, that, I think that may be uh, the, the issue. So I'll just go onto the meter setting, the SWR meter setting here. And um, take the frequency down slightly. So 7450 I'll go for, which is the calling frequency for 4 meters. And um, it's actually not too bad at the moment. 1.35 1 1.35 to 1 on the uh, call frequency. So I'd be happy to use that. But as I say, it's, it's very changeable. It's very variable. And um, if you get a spell of uh, really wet weather, that will go up to over um, 2 to 1. So, um, I'm going to take the Slim Jim down and I'm going to change it for a different antenna. What we're looking at now is uh, the coil that goes with uh, a Viper 78 uh, by Hawkins Radio. It's an antenna I bought uh, from eBay. I've got um, one of his uh, two meter and 70 centimeters antennas and uh, they were quite well for portable. I'll just uh, run up so you can get an idea of the, the length of the antennas laid out on the floor here. And uh, it's designed primarily I think for uh, for portable work um, but um, it looks quite weatherproof, well weatherproofed and uh, weather resistant. So I'm going to try it in place of the Slim Jim on the uh, the Roach Pole. Um, it comes with some quite extensive um, information and instructions there. And um, we'll put it up and uh, we'll see how it works. Um, the Slim Jim worked very well. And I had some good contacts, regular contacts with it locally. And I, um, in the sporadic E season, actually worked into uh, Denmark on 4 meters FM. So, um, I suppose this antenna has got quite a lot to live up to. But I'm hoping it will be a little bit more consistent in terms of its uh, SWR in the, in the winter anyway. So if it gets me through the winter season, I'll be happy. Um, obviously at the connector, there's a <clears throat> PL259 connector there. I'll have to make sure that's properly weatherproofed. We'll probably run some self amalgamating tape around some other parts of the antenna, but by and large it looks looks pretty um, waterproof. And it should sit on the um, fiberglass DX commander pole uh, okay. It's not going to put any weight on it, so it should be as, as uh, convenient as the, um, the 450 ohm ribbon Slim Jim that I've been using. So we'll get this up in the air and uh, we'll see um, what the SWR reading is like. Okay, here it is on the uh, on the ground now. And you can see the 450 ohm ribbon. Uh, Slim Jim. See, at the moment the SWR on this is pretty good. But um, it does seem to change with the weather. So we're going to take this off the pole here. And we'll put the uh, the Viper antenna in its place. 
Okay, this is quite good. We've got a loop on the top of the antenna and a little loop on top of the DX Commander pole. So I've cable tied those two. I'll be clipping these cable ties and tidying up in a minute. But we've got it now running down the pole and the coil the ballon is going to sit about there um, probably put a cable tie or two around that and uh, we've got an SO239 here at the bottom of the antenna which is very useful because um, I had a PL259 on the end of my Slim Jim so I had to have one of those back to back connectors so that's uh, another opportunity for water to get in so I can screw my uh, PL259 from the coax from the shack straight in there and get plenty of self amalgamating tape on that to uh, to seal it up and then we'll be able to get it up in the air and test the SWR okay that's back up in the air it's very low profile so let's see the uh, There's the antenna on its uh, JX Commander pole. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the SWR. Now for the real test, let's uh, turn on the analyzer. I like these because if something's gone dramatically wrong, we're not in danger of damaging the uh, transceiver, the output finals of the transceiver. Let's have a look at the SWR meter setting first. So I'll go into that and start it. And well, that's a very good reading. We're on 1.17 to 1 on uh, 7450. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to have a look at the chart, which will give me the low points of the SWR. Go for that. And let's just press OK. And you can see now it's uh, scanning. It's up to about 60 megahertz now. Should see a big dip in a minute, and there you go, yeah. And well, you couldn't ask for better than that. Um, the minimum SWR, the, the dip 1.17 to 70.5. So you're right in the middle of the band there. And uh, we've got a very good reading. Um, if we let's have a look at another setting I'll go back to the meter and let's have a look at the, the sort of bandwidth we've got with this so we've got a 1.17 there and uh, I'll just turn my 4 meter rig is on and that's you can hear the um, the signal from the analyzer making that noise I can scan down still usable down to uh, 69 68 holy about 69 megs I think um, it's okay -ish to 69 and then going up again probably to about, uh, about 72 there the 15 is still quite yeah okay 72 69 to 72 so that's not a bad bandwidth anyway but the fact of it is that the um, low point is right smack where it needs to be so very very happy with that we'll uh, just see how well it works now on here 